Hey gearheads, Merry Christmas and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there is Tucker and we're going to do something we don't normally do and definitely don't advocate doing in most cars. Let's start this one up in the garage with it closed because we are in the 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQS 580 SUV and in this video we're going to tell you what this three row SUV is like for a family of three here at Christmas time. All right, as we said earlier, Merry Christmas. You just have a few shopping days left, but I think we are in the ultimate uh, Santa sleigh here okay. in the 2023 EQS SUV. I have to ask, Holly, you were quite smitten and uh, couldn't hold it back the first time you got in this. I know, it's pretty, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, it is a very space age, I will say. It All is, the lights, yeah. your favorite rose gold mm -hmm. here in the dash. I like that. We've I got, like the navy blue. Uh, they're, they're after it's my nice. dollars with the navy blue. You sign me up when you put navy blue inside a car. I have to get your, so we know you think mm -hmm. it's pretty, but what are your overall opinions of this EQS 580? SUV. They did a lot right yes. that I love a okay. whole lot, um, but they have some major drawbacks that would keep me from buying it. All right, so <laughs> should we start with the positives or the <laughs> negatives first? Let's let's get the negatives out of the way because I have a feeling there aren't too many. No, there's not too many. And uh, then we will get to everything we love about it. So what 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 are the negatives with this? Um, expensive, but I can't tell you yet, <laughs> price tag of this EQS 580 SUV. The, the biggest drawback that would, in fact, I mean, sometimes there are some negatives that I could live with or get used to, mm -hmm. but the biggest drawback that would cause me from purchasing this car yes. is that it's a three-row SUV, mm -hmm. so geared towards families, right. but whenever you lean up the second row seat to get in the third row, it automatically moves the front rows up. So uncomfortably, uncomfortably so. so to where you're in the dash. So if somebody is sitting there, you basically have to get out right. to let somebody in the third row seat. And we ran into the situation where we're trying to get into the third row seat and it's raining and I'm having to stand outside in the rain or be folded up here. Or be folded up in the dash. Yeah, I can't believe that there isn't like, I mean, there are sensors. This car knows when I'm sitting here, and yeah. we'll get into that in a little bit. I can't believe it doesn't take that into consideration that there's somebody sitting in the seat um, when adjusting the back seats so that you could get into that third row seat. I will say, I've ridden in the third row seat. It's not uncomfortable, it's not the worst but it is definitely more a bonus seat. This really is a five-seater more than anything. Uh, mm -hmm. But being an EV, it has a completely flat floor and a very roomy second row. Mm -hmm. So even with three rows of people in here, we were all able to get comfortable. Uh, that was the first time you drove it. We had my parents mm -hmm. in the middle, me and Tucker way in the way back, your mom riding up here. Mm -hmm. And it comfortably hauled six people, no problem and I'll give it props for that. But yes, yeah, for sure. very odd choice because it's a power release for that second row and so it moves the second row seat forward and the front row seats forward. All right, is that the only negative? Yeah, right. I, it, there's, a, there's a few other things, but I would say that's the feature that would make me second guess purchasing it and, that, and that's not a good thing. And um, you asked if it can be mm -hmm. turned off. It is definitely something that could be fixed with a software update if it's not currently in the mm -hmm. screen. So mm -hmm. uh, that we just haven't found. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll give them that. Yeah, that it could be fixed. Um, I'll say a drawback for me, especially this week that we've had it. It's been rainy. It's been nasty. We've got a four year old. 
who in their right mind thought white carpets was a good idea? Uh, I know. I, we for would, the most part, I love the white yes. interior, and it would be easy to clean off mm -hmm. um, if you got a smudge or something like that on any of the white surfaces in the car. Other than the floorboards, they're like really nice kind of carpet. Mm -hmm. um, white, though. That is something we would have to purchase at different floor mats. Funny note, uh, this actually did come with a rear cargo mat that is black. <laughs> so obviously they figured something out. They're like, okay, you're going to be loading a bunch of stuff in here. That back load section is also white carpet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, they, they thought at least a little bit, but yes, the floors in this need to be black because having this on a rainy December week, the, these floors look disgusting. And yeah. it, it's unfortunate. Speaking of disgusting, I'm gonna, you know, if you know, you know, let me polish off this. No, don't Mercedes let the Benz, haters comment. <laughs> this Mercedes Benz hyper screen here. Um, any other negatives for you before we jump into what we love about this vehicle? No. Yeah, so uh, really, very, very short list here. Three person memory seat over there. On both sides. Three person memory seat I over here. I really like that it's also your heat and ventilation is on the panel mm -hmm. too. You don't have to dig, dig through, through the, menus. yeah, the menus to find them. So I and, like that. And Mercedes makes it so that you can turn the heat and ventilation on I love simultaneously. It. I love it. <laughs> and while we're talking about the seats, this is probably the best massaging seats okay. I've been in, which speaking of, turn oh, us on. Yep, yeah. so let me, I will take care of that from over here with my auxiliary screen. Please use headphones during video playback to prevent yeah. distra di driver distractions. <laughs> but yes, uh, I will go into my screen over here. Would you like a classic massage? Sure. All right. Now you better give me the deep waves. All right, well, let's see. Turning Mom back. Deep waves for, there we go, we'll just do both right there. So yes, I've got an auxiliary screen over here. We've got this large 17 plus inch center screen. You've got a large digital screen mm -hmm. back there, all behind one giant panel of glass. I can do pretty much anything I need to over here. I can change the settings. I can look at the off-road mode. This vehicle has off-road capabilities because it has mm -hmm. an adjustable suspension. I don't know who would be taking one of these off-road. Not quite uh, something I would see myself doing, but I've got all kinds of things over here. I can uh, use my uh, Mercedes-Benz branded Bluetooth headphones so as to not distract you if I'm watching something over here because the car is actually watching your eyeballs over there. Hmm. If I were to be watching something over here and you were to look, it would pause it <laughs> because it does not want you to get distracted. So lots of stuff can be done over here. I can send navigation. You can watch a show over there? Yeah, I can watch oh. a show. I can listen to music. I can do a lot of stuff. I can send navigation over there to you, you know, because it would be so inconvenient for me to reach over here. That is inconvenient. I Let's... reach over here and do the navigation, but I can, I can see all kinds of stuff. I see where our battery is at, 98%, which we've got over 300 miles at 98%. Lots of really cool stuff can be done with this Mercedes-Benz hyper screen. Yeah, I like it. It came, It's a little intimidating for somebody who doesn't like tech, but mm -hmm. the fact that you can do all the changes over there, I'm just like, Yeah, I, I will be your personal servant, and as long as I am getting a massage with a heated and cooled backside, I'm perfectly fine <laughs> over here. So all right, gearheads, putting a child seat back here in the back of the EQS SUV. It's fairly convenient, as most SUVs are. I will note we've got these nice quilted Nappa leather seats. I will be putting down something to protect them. But you have this uh, fixed in place little leather flap that hides both of the lower latch points on this 60-40 split bench second row. Before I put the child seat in place, I will show you the quick access to the third row in this. There's a little electric actuated button up here that slides both of these seats on the passenger side forward to allow you to climb in a little more easily. And then you push that button again 
and it slides hopefully yeah both seats back into place but you have to power recline this back into the position you had it in prior to climbing back into the back so doesn't remember where it was kind of a weird notion weird thing there but we're here to put in a child seat uh, just because this isn't my car uh, it is rather expensive and these are very nice Napa leather seats and we have hard plastic on the bottom of our child safety seat I'm just gonna put down this microfiber cloth you know just I'm weird like that and then we will load in my child's forward-facing Graco car seat. I will say that I normally start off by putting the top tether through underneath the headrest, and these do have pillows on the headrest. That's a very nice touch. And to actually get to that, I'm gonna slide the seat forward, but uh, that's as far as it will go. So I'm kind of reaching back here blindly looking for that top tether location and there we go we're able to snug that up into place and then we can scoot the seat electronically slowly very back into place back here so that i have some room to get in and around i already mentioned that leather flap allows you really good access to these lower latch points because they are very visible now that they are not obstructed by anything and then you simply tighten the seat down into place be sure and follow all your manufacturer's instructions of both the vehicle and the child seat when installing them but as you can see maybe a little time consuming but it is very easy here in this EQS SUV so uh, we are about to turn on the historic brick streets of downtown Tyler to do Tucker's wobbly head test. What are your initial impressions on the ride of this before we <laughs> well, even turn over? it's it? amazing. The <laughs> ride is smooth. It's an EV, so you don't have all the... Right, the transmission. Transmission crap, <laughs> problems. Yeah. I love it. People have asked me what I think about this car, especially as an EV. I think EVs lend themselves especially well to luxury brands because the ride is usually better because they weigh more, they're a little more planted. The wheels are out to the corners, which helps with the wheelbase for stuff like this. Tucker, how's your wobbly head? It's not wobbly. Not wobbly. Not wobbly. And the... Uh, but, but the camera's pretty wobbly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the camera's pretty wobbly. But I will note that the sidewall on these tires is actually quite meaty. So there's quite a bit of sidewall on these tires to help with the ride. There's just a lot to make the ride really good in this. It's adaptive. It changes to the road conditions. It, it's a very good ride. And here we are on decommissioned railroad tracks. You can barely tell, like very plush very opulent ride here in this yeah. uh, EQS SUV. I, I have not been disappointed. It is magic carpet uh, to be escorted around in. <laughs> it is. I love, love, love this car. Yeah? I, yes, this is, makes, I mean, I know it's a luxury car, but it makes me feel real fancy. <laughs> you definitely get a lot of looks in this as well because these are so new, they aren't really out on the road. Mm -hmm. I know our current, our dealership here in town currently has uh, two of the lower trims, but we are in the top trim 580 uh, Formatic Plus. So, like, this definitely turns heads. It looks like really nothing else on the road. Uh, it is a stretched version of the sedan which I have tested already here on the channel, but uh, I did not test the 580 with the hyper screen. Yeah, um, I like the, the steering wheel is meaty. I will say as a short person, I do feel like I can't really get the seat tall enough to not feel like I'm in a hole. I kind of feel like I'm a little kid driving, Okay. <laughs> but that's okay because I mean, it's, it drives really smoothly. I can see over the thing. Mm. And then the head up display is amazing. Massive. It's amazing. In fact, I will work on it. I will get uh, us directions to Target from over here. 
uh, while you talk about that steering wheel and the head-up display because I interrupted you on that. You did. Um, yeah, no, I just like that it's, it doesn't really distract from the road. It kind of feels like, and this is going to sound distracting, but it kind of feels like you're in a video game. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds distracting, but you know on that Mario Kart, how the arrows are on the road in front of you, like where you're supposed to turn? Yep. That's exactly this head-up display. I love it. Especially when you get to your destination, there's a pin floating in the road. In the road, <laughs> yes. It's really to. interesting. It's not distracting as I'm making it sound. Um, but I, I barely even like look at this screen right. right here at all. So it uses augmented reality. Passengers do get a little bit of a sense of it because it'll use the camera and display it here on the screen over here. It'll probably do it on my screen since I've got the navigation going over here. But it shows basically what you're seeing through the head up display. It'll display arrows where you need to turn yeah. or a pin where your final destination is is actually really cool and really awesome and because of it yeah that head-up display screen area is massive the largest that we've sampled mm -hmm. um, which I is like really it. impressive thoughts on the steering wheel because you are very strong opinions on steering wheels. I really like this steering wheel I want to take it with me too <laughs> would you like to know the one depressing thing for me oh, with that steering wheel? what hey Mercedes how may I help you Turn on the heated steering wheel. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. This vehicle does not have steering wheel heating. Womp, womp. Oh, I don't God. understand. In a vehicle with this price that has heated, ventilated, and massaging seats, how you don't have a heated steering wheel. I don't know, but maybe it's the way the steering wheel's made because it hasn't been cold. That is true. It, it has not really needed it. Granted, we've not really gotten below the 40s. Here while we've had this one so but I still in my Jeep mm -hmm. while we've had this I have turned on my my heated steering wheel Fair. but I have not needed it any time I've driven in this so yeah. maybe it's it just doesn't need it maybe it doesn't get cold yep. I'm gonna say it probably doesn't get cold because I like this steering <laughs> wheel and then you've got all your capacitive uh, touch sensitive areas you can control this screen from the right side you can control that screen from the left side you can adjust your head-up display from the left side of that steering wheel <laughs> there is so much to be done like you said earlier it kind of gets overwhelming uh, at some point if if you are trying to take it all in at once you've got mm -hmm. paddles on the back to adjust your regenerative braking which by default every time you start the vehicle is in normal which you commented hasn't been it feels and like that and that is a feature that i usually don't like yeah. so it feels like, like driving a normal car to you mm -hmm. um i will note this has uh, full regenerative braking where it's basically <laughs> one pedal driving and then it's got something called intelligent uh, regenerative braking which you'll have to go watch my solo video for more details on that it has lots of storage yes I mean, it has massive big... <laughs> center tunnel right here which we've got your purse a hat some uh, decorations for Christmas all kinds of stuff down there a glove box here that's a fairly good size storage here in both of the front doors yeah, uh, the... I already opened up this you've got a real wood panel with two cup holders, cheat wireless charging, uh, NFC connection, two USB-C ports, mm -hmm. all kinds of storage up here. Tucker's got storage in both the doors back there, fold down center armrest, map pockets on backs of both of these seats. And then, you know, you've got the way back, way back there, way back. which as we've already touched on, works better as a cargo area than a people area. We live in Tyler, we Texas. Live in, <laughs> we live in Tyler, Texas. Tucker, what have your thoughts on this car been? I like that it can go fast. You like that yeah, it can go fast? You like Let's that. see if mommy will give it ju just a little. Oh, and it sounds like a spaceship and you can change those sounds again. Go watch my, my solo review for all the rundown on the performance stuff. But aren't we going to Taiwan? We're what going to Target. The puddle lights, is that what they're yes, called? Yes, that is what they're Look like. Look at me, I'm a car reviewer. <laughs> so we've got the Mercedes-Benz logo that is projected when the doors are closed. And when you open, you get this repeated Mercedes uh, TriStar design uh, that kind of dances and changes. It's not a static look um, that displays where your feet would land 
stepping out of the vehicle. So yeah. that's very nice. That's nice. And I already mentioned this wood panel here, but we've got wood on the front doors, wood on the back doors, heated outboard seats back there. Mm -hmm. My goodness, all the ambient lighting, the rose gold. What? Love it. What is not to love like it. about this car? I love it. The massive panoramic roof, which mm -hmm. let me just uh, see if I can close it. <laughs> Technology. No, it's right here. Yeah, yeah, you say, but uh, <laughs> capacitive touch here. Yeah. We'll, we'll just close it the old-fashioned way. Uh, uh, she saw <laughs> she saw you go, uh, uh, <laughs> See? Ah, you see that? <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> so there you go. You can. <laughs> you can at some point. I'll see. <laughs> it's very easy to, to just stop. <laughs> stop. Yeah. You but. did it that time. <laughs> But um, yeah, anyway, so you've got your, sun your sunshades up there that you can open and close. This panel does open. The rear panel stays fixed in place. It's a, the fanciest, you know what handle there is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Rip and leather. laughs> Just so much to like, which brings us to, okay, I will qualify. This vehicle, again, is so new. It didn't even come with a window sticker yet. I had to go to our friends at Mercedes-Benz of Tyler to pull the VIN number to even get the specs on this one. I didn't know the name of the color. I couldn't go online and build a price. I love the it. color. It is Alpine Gray, it. by the way. Alpine yep. Gray. I we haven't it. even talked about the exterior so much as it looks like nothing else on the road. Right. What are your thoughts on the exterior, Sally? I like it. I think there could be a little bit more curves. Mm -hmm. It to make it curvy. interesting, but I like it. You know me, I like cars that you don't see mm -hmm. on the road that doesn't look like every other car. And this definitely doesn't look like that. I think you kind of said it looks like a spaceship on the inside. I feel like that's kind of what it looks like on the outside. It's very like true. very aerodynamic. It kind of comes like shorter mm -hmm. at the front. It is one of the um, most aerodynamic vehicles on the road. Um, so a lot went into the aerodynamic design of this and then the designers went in making it look like a Mercedes behind that. I love it. So, I love it. <laughs> the exterior is Alpine Gray. The inside is Neva Gray with Biscaya Blue Napa leather up here. Love so, um, what do you reckon <laughs> this one costs? I did mention okay. it is the top trim. We yeah, are missing, we are missing a few technological aspects of this. We don't have the screens on the back of the front seats or the uh, removable tablet in the center console. We do have Gosh, a Qi wireless doing? charger back in the center console, oh. but um, so they do get fancier than this one. Okay. Care to, care to hazard a guess? 115. I'm going in the six figures. This starts, the 580 starts at 125,950. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't too far off. Yeah. But uh, this one with all the options, as best we know at this point in time, because they are still working through final details, one of 48, 490 for this with one. The with the all monitor. A, 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 no, as this one is spec. Oh, is this one is spec. So oh. they, do, they do climb a little bit further north yeah. than that. Yeah. So. Um, okay. This is kind of out of our price range. You really love it. I do love it. The only real drawback to you was the seat situation climbing yeah. into the third row. We could fix- Which, I mean, if if your like grandparents mm. buying this or you don't have little kids or- this And a lot really of well people who are- either. Yeah, it, have people who are getting in and out of the back. Not a big deal. Yeah. Great vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, if you're going to be using the third row a lot, that, that would definitely be a drawback for me. Yeah. And, and this does have an adaptive height suspension, which we didn't talk mm -hmm. about and four wheel steering. So it is super maneuverable oh. in town. Thanks to the four wheel steering. You already mentioned because it's an EV, we don't have to mess with transmission stuff. It's just smooth. It rides well. It's a good it's comfortable, so super comfortable. comfortable. So again, kind of out of our price range, but we would definitely keep it if given the option. A hundred percent. Just maybe change the format. Stop talking for. 
for right now. Well, let me finish by <laughs> saying if you want to see more from Holly and Tucker, go find them on Instagram at Female and Consumer. Corey. And yes, I'm there, but I'm daddy <laughs> to you, sir. Uh, you can find me and everything and we do at yeah, GT Garage Shock on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all the things, YouTube, all the things. Uh, or you can head on over to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for us, we are going to finish up with some Christmas shopping before the holiday gets here. We're almost there. So Merry Christmas. And until next time, gearheads. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Can you tell me a joke? Uh, after you turn the cameras off. Well, it's okay. You can tell me a joke right now. Okay. A car was as big as the world. What? What? Let's see how easy it is to park this beast. I'm going to turn our cameras on. Mighty and see how easy to park this beast. Beef. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hey, gearheads, and welcome to Garage Shop. Wait. Mm -mm. You ready? weren't ready. Oh, I forgot. It's Merry Christmas. I'm going to give you the... I'm going to give you the... Are you ready? Are you? Are you ready? <laughs> no. Okay, I'm ready. No, I'm going to sneeze. I'm trying not to. Sorry. I'm ready. Tucker's, Tucker's ready. ready. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Wait, hey. no. I'm He's not, not ready. He's not. <laughs> See what I had to put up with her? Okay, I'm ready. Okay, okay we're ready. <laughs>